time to take the spider out for a run to get all the fluids and juices all circulated and warmed up. And I want to tell you the story about an encounter I had with, I'm pretty sure was a Navy SEAL on a classified training mission. Then we had a very unique encounter. That uh, makes for a colorful story. And since it's wintertime still in Virginia Beach and crowds are kind of small, I thought it'd be a good idea to go down to the resort strip and point out some of the uh, unique sites uh, along the oceanfront that uh, you may find interesting. Starting off today's ride, I realized that I don't have a full tank of gas. I got more than half, so we're good with that. And my windshield's dirty. But the temperature is moderate. It's uh, in the high 50s. The thermometer on my doorstep said 60. I don't think we're quite there yet. Uh, the thermometer on the spider says 59, so maybe we are. Um, yesterday was in the mid-40s, and it's going to rain for the next three days. So this is the, about the only time I can actually take to get the spider out and get her all warmed up. She's due to go in for some uh, service here probably next month. Uh, need to uh, accomplish uh, the 29,000 mile service checks. Need some new rubber on all three tires. The original front tires, original 2014 tires. And that's really the end of the useful life of tires in my humble opinion. Are they showing any wear and tear? Mm, other than normal wear and they're out of balance. No, they look good, but you know, dry rot and really adversely impact tires, and I think they've reached the end of their calendar life. So I'm gonna change them out. So I had a very interesting encounter with a customer service representative uh, from United Airlines. Um, if you may recall, last year, 2020, we had anticipated going to uh, Glacier National Park in Montana. And that trip would have required us to fly commercial because of uh, Miriam not having an infinite amount of vacation time available. So uh, the drive out and drive back would have been just too time consuming. So uh, we elected to fly. That said, about a year ago, we made airline reservations, paid for them in advance, and then COVID hit. Uh, and pretty much the airlines were shut down. So it's not like we didn't, we chose not to fly. We didn't have a choice. The airlines, uh, graciously elected to give us a credit for the unused amount of money which was all of it and we could use it anytime before January of 2022 and so I called their customer service number to reschedule the flights uh, young lady answered obviously an offshore call center uh, you know a lot of people have issues with that you know, I really don't. I just want the service to be done properly. Uh, you know, since we're paying good money for airline tickets. And it was. She was very professional, very courteous, very helpful. We got the job done. These are offshore call centers, and because of COVID, many of the offshore call centers are working from home. So I'm on the phone talking with the representative of a very large, multi-billion dollar corporation, and I'm hearing roosters crowing in the background. Now, that's neither good nor bad. I have nothing against chickens. I was raised, uh, I, I spent a lot of time on my grandparents' farms, both of them. Uh, my dad's parents, my mom's parents, all of them had chickens. I have nothing against chickens. Just when you call a multi-billion dollar corporation, the last thing you expect to hear is chickens growing in the background. So I was just kind of taking me aback a little bit. So that was bizarre. But the upside, uh, because of COVID, I'm guessing the reason is that the airline flight values have been decreased significantly. Um, had we simply duplicated last year's trip, we would have left money on the table that we would have to use on some upcoming trip before January next year or lose it. Well, I'm not a fan of losing money. So I looked at uh, our options, and for just a few hundred dollars more, I could upgrade the entire flight to first class round trip. And that's what we did. Oh, a little restaurant review here uh, on 
at the intersection of Fifth Street and Atlantic Avenue is the Waterman's Restaurant. Waterman's, uh, you know, pretty fair, pretty fair. No, nothing really, really special, but the prices are reasonable. And considering you're on the Atlantic Ocean, that's really nice. Uh, full bar, uh, outside seating, so you can sit outside and the weather's nice and uh, have your uh, your lunch or your dinner and, or a cocktail. Uh, pretty fair place. It's hard to believe uh, there was a time, not that long ago in our history, that the resort strip was much different. It was a tiny little beach community, very small. A few wooden hotels, a couple of restaurants, uh, a lot of homes. And uh, that was it. That was Virginia Beach. And now it has become a 400 plus square mile uh, city with a very, very large and active oceanfront. So our first stop today is going to be the historic DeWitt Cottage uh, on the uh, on the oceanfront. One of the few remaining homes in the resort area that is uh, still here. It's now become a, uh, a tourist attraction. It's a landmark. The DeWitt Cottage was built in 1895 and stayed a residence for the DeWitt family to 1988, when it was placed on the National Register of Historic Places. It now serves as the Atlantic Wildfowl Heritage Museum. It's strange to see an actual residence facing the oceanfront amidst all the high-rise hotels and restaurants. The oceanfront is kind of uh crowded during the season so they have uh, paid meters as you would find any place except during the off season and you can tell that the uh, off season is in place because you cannot even pay for parking even if you wanted to and we're going to park here because there's some places we want to see right up here this is a big uh, military town navy army marines and uh, up on the peninsula of the air force and the city's done a good job of uh, remembering those folks and honoring them. And we have a little park on uh, between Atlantic Avenue and the boardwalk uh, with a lot of statues in their honor. Uh, this statue is commonly referred to as the Norwegian Lady uh, for us locals. Uh, it's been here forever and a day as far as Virginia Beach history. There's a story behind this. Uh, in the late 1800s, a uh, wooden sailing ship named the Dictator, which was from Norway, was coming to the United States to uh, do some commerce and got caught in a storm and became shipwrecked right off uh, Atlantic Avenue right behind us. And uh, it was tragic. Uh, a lot of the crew members, to include the family of the captain, died. A lot of the crew members perished and are buried locally. And the uh, only remaining part of the ship that was salvageable was the, uh, th the figure that goes in the front of most wooden sailing ships of the era. And it was referred to as the Norwegian Lady since the ship was Norwegian. Uh, the original wooden uh, headpiece was placed on display here for many 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 years uh, and the weather finally got to it and the home in which the ship was based Moss Norway uh, actually had a sculptor render two exact same statues of the Norwegian lady one they donated to the city of Virginia Beach which is on display here it's been here since the 70s and the other is the exact opposite one which is in Norway on their coast looking back across the ocean they both are staring at each other across the ocean and this was in honor of the folks who uh, who lost their lives uh, right 100 yards behind us uh, so many years ago spot may not seem remotely interesting but there's a great story here uh, 30 years ago when I was working as a first responder uh, one boring night uh, the radio came alive with one of the police units 
call it out on the radio that a jet had just taken off from Oceana and it appeared to be on fire. Another uh, police unit answered up and said, it's heading out towards the ocean front. Then the dispatcher chimed in and said, all units, we have reports of parachutes in the trees on 24th Street between Pacific and Arctic Avenue. So a couple of us jumped into our car, ran over here, and uh, the tree right in front of us, right there, they were helping the, uh, the pilot uh, get down out of his harness, and he had suffered some back injuries from coming through the tree. The other uh, crew member, the bombardier navigator, landed on the roof and was able to shimmy down and he had a laceration on his hand. Uh, those were the only injuries. And a witness reported that the jet went straight between uh, the two hotels in front of us and went out into the ocean and crashed. It was an A-6 intruder, a two-member uh, attack aircraft. And uh, letter, letter reports re, uh, indicated that it had ingested a bird on takeoff, which caused the engine to explode. And so low, slow, full of gas, uh, it just didn't have enough uh, power to, uh, to climb out. So they managed to nurse it out to the ocean before they punched out right over the beach. And then the winds brought them back in uh, to, the, uh, to where they ended up landing right here. Uh, I was trying to uh, instruct the uh, ground crew to turn off the emergency locator beacons that were in the, uh, uh, in the seats so that the uh, Civil Air Patrol would uh, not, be, uh, not be called unnecessarily. And uh, the bombardier navigator was on a wireless phone talking to his wife and said, Honey, it's us. Uh, and you're going to see it on the news in a few moments anyway. It was us, and we are okay. So, uh, happy ending to that story. But novel, you don't see parachutes in the trees very often. Which, by the way, will lead into my funny story about a probable Navy SEAL encounter later in this story. Well, the weatherman, he did lie. Uh, only supposed to be a 20% chance of rain today and not till noon. It's well before noon and it's already started raining. Uh, it seems like every time I try to go to the north end of the city to do some uh, video shoots, uh, it rained on. Okay. And now to the bizarre Navy SEAL story. First, an introduction. Navy SEALs are sort of part of our community because they're, the Navy SEALs are broken up into two basic groups. And I am not an expert. This is just my, my knowledge is living amongst them. Uh, they're East Coast SEALs and there are West Coast SEALs. Uh, the East Coast SEALs, many of them are assigned locally. Uh, there are two bases. And this is not classified information. This is easily available on the Internet. Because I checked it before I started this video to make sure I wasn't speaking about things I shouldn't be speaking about. Um, Little Creek Amphibious Base is uh, the home to uh, some of the groups, uh, or some of the teams, as they call themselves, and Damneck Navy Base, which is only about three or four miles uh, away from our home, is uh, is one of the other ones. Um, both are beach situated bases; they have oceans uh, at the perimeter of their base. So, makes sense because these are aquatic combat people. So, it's not uncommon to hear machine gun fire and explosions coming from the area of Dam Neck, you know, occasionally. You know, we just joke and say that the SEALs have attacked Dam Neck again. And they see a lot of helicopters flying over with guys hanging out, uh, like they're ready to pounce on somebody. Very, very, um, very intimidating, very, very formidable people. Um, when I was working as a first responder, it was not uncommon, and the one case in point, to get a, uh, an update before uh, we uh, went to work during our meeting before work, that uh, the Navy SEALs were planning an exercise, and if we were to get reports of people going through people's yards, uh, dressed in camouflage, carrying machine guns, uh, and we encountered them, uh, they are instructed to be compliant with our instructions and to identify themselves and their name should be matched, would match a list indicating they are authorized to uh, to be out carrying machine guns in people's backyards because they are commandos. You know, not as bad as uh, down in the area where they do the training for the uh, Green Beret 
where the entire county is on board, or used to be on board, uh, as far as assisting in the training of the Green Berets. Uh, the mission of the Green Beret is different than the Navy SEALs, so Virginia Beach, they just keep a low profile. Occasionally, you will get a report of uh, people in camo repelling off the roofs of hotels, uh, things like that. So that's, you, you come to live with it as a first responder in this area. So, so about 30 years ago, uh, I'm working as a first responder and I get a uh, call that a person has observed uh, a parachute with a person on a parachute going into this campground off to my right, the Holiday uh, Travel Center. Uh, big campground, occupies a lot of a lot of real estate. And so we went over there and talked to her. She was very clear there was a person on a parachute going into the campground. And that is very bizarre. So remembering of the events of the parachutes uh, on the in the trees off the uh, off Pacific Avenue a few years ago, uh, thought it'd be a good idea to have our dispatcher make contact with the Oceana Naval Air Station to see if they've lost any airplanes. And they say, no, they haven't lost any airplanes at all. So I was with a, uh, a young rookie. Uh, he was riding with me that night. So we came in and to begin to see if we could find a missing parachutist. And it was in the off season, so the campground wasn't closed, but uh, there wasn't anybody here. And uh, the sun had set and we were trying to figure out what was going on. And I'll make a note, right over there is a chain link fence. I'm going to talk about that chain link fence in a minute. Um, so we began to look to see if we can find the lost and wayward parachutist. And like I said, it was uh, in the evening hours and I heard this, this disembodied voice from a distance away going, Hello! Hello! So I put the spotlight over in that direction. And there, who I could barely make out, standing by the chain link fence, was a guy dressed in total camouflage, camouflage face paint, with a lot of gear with him, a lot of gear. And so, went over there, and <laughs> he said, well, I wasn't supposed to be here. I was supposed to be on the beach at Dan Neck, but I had a parachute malfunction, and um, ended up off course. He said, I already called my people, and they're coming to get me, but I don't know exactly where I am. I told him where he was at, and he says, can you take me to the main road, which is right where we're at right now? So he gets on the radio, he's talking to somebody, and says, uh, I'm at the uh, the campground, the holiday campground uh, on General Booth Boulevard, and they said, we will come get you. And he said, can you give me a ride to the main road so I can they can find me? Said, yeah. So he said, I, I, so he offered to throw his pack over the chain link fence so he could hop across and get into our car. And he, as he threw his pack over and his weapon, he was carrying a assault rifle. You know, I'm familiar enough with weaponry that I could tell he was loaded. It was heavy. Uh, and his pack was incredibly heavy. So he hopped over the fence. We uh, drove him up. And very shortly, uh, a white unmarked panel van came to a stop. It did have government tags on it. The door opened up. He threw his pack and his weapon into the and, and his parachute into the uh, uh, van and said, thanks for the ride, and disappeared into the night. And I looked at the young rookie I was with going, that's just the bizarre, most bizarre thing I have ever experienced. And a few minutes later, I get a call to uh, that uh, uh, somebody wants me to call them in reference to the parachute. So I'm thinking it might be the media because they listen to our, uh, our they scan our frequencies I called the number, and the person answers and identifies himself as a uh, high-ranking Navy officer. And very, very quickly, but very professionally, says, "Who knows about this event?" And I said, "To my knowledge, the lady who reported it, but we haven't told her what we found." And my partner and myself are the only ones that had any contact with him. And he goes, "Would you do me a, a, a very important favor? Don't disclose anything that's happened here today." Uh, because, uh, well, we, we don't want the word to get out. And uh, the only thing I can guess is, at the time, they were in the planning stages of some sort of operation, and they didn't want uh, the, any details of uh, that operation to be revealed. Like I said, it was 30 years ago, so uh, I'm sure the information is uh, 
but the event is no longer classified, even if it was classified. So considering that uh, Damnick is the home of uh, Navy Special Warfare, uh, Navy SEALs, and that's where he was heading, and he was acting like a commando, carrying a loaded assault rifle, and the fact that his command didn't want him to, doesn't want the media to know about it, I suspect it was uh, an encounter with a, uh, a Navy SEAL. So that, through my entire career, was the most bizarre incidents I have ever experienced. Well, we made it back to the barn nice and safe. And uh, I'm actually kind of looking forward to some nicer weather, at least milder, so I can get the spider into the shop, get some maintenance done for our upcoming spring trips. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the stroll down memory lane as much as I did. Uh, this city is just full of memories of things I've I've done professionally and, and through leisure activities because it's been my home all my life. It's hard to believe that 30 years was really that long ago, but it really kind of was. So if you, uh, if you enjoyed the, those stories and if you want to hear more, leave me a line at the bottom. Uh, you know, I, I've got a million of them, but uh, I don't want to bore anybody either. So let me know in the comments and uh, we'll find some other ones. If I don't have any good ones, I'll make something good up. Uh, about the time that the flying saucer landed at the oceanfront. Not just kidding. Anyway, guys, I'm going to stop boring you now. Go in and get a nice hot cup of coffee and uh, get some work done. So you all take care and thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. And don't forget to subscribe. Feel free to leave a comment below.